Praise the Lord and good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study and tonight we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 5 but before we get started in Romans 5 uh, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father we thank you and praise you for this evening. Thank you and praise you for all your goodness, mercy, love, kindness, compassion toward us and God we thank you for the opportunity to get into your word. Please speak to us from your word and help us to understand and learn more about you. Lord we love you so much and we thank you for just this opportunity to gather together, to dig deep into your word and to, to hear what you have to say to us. And God, I just ask that you would direct and guide us. Please help uh, each one, Lord, as they go in their walk with you. Lord, we ask your forgiveness for the times that we fail and, and we thank you for, for every challenge and every everything that comes in our walk with you, Lord, because everything helps us to trust you and, and to lean upon you more and more. And we just give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Romans chapter 5. Let's read chapter 5. We'll read it. We're not going to be able to cover all of chapter 5 tonight, but we will uh, read it all the way through so we get the context. And let's read that. Uh, Romans chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, Yet preadventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were re enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it, were, it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but to the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of right, the righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came unto all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's uh, disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that offense that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Christ Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Wow, so there is a lot in Romans chapter 5. And uh, this, is, this will take us a little bit to get through because super important what we're reading here. This has everything to do with, you know, us being saved. And I am so thankful to the Lord for salvation that's available in Christ. If you go back to verse 1. We're going to break this verse down a little bit and look at it. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we understand that we are justified by faith. And because we're justified, justified by faith, we have peace with God. This comes through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot have peace with God aside, you know, apart from 
Christ. You cannot have peace with God if you don't have Jesus. You must have Jesus in order to have peace. You have to have uh, faith in Christ and what he has done, the finished work that he did on the cross. If you don't have faith in Christ, then you're still in your sins. If you think that you can get to heaven by uh, your good works or your good attitude or or maybe uh, by your bank account, you're, you're going to be sadly mistaken. You can't get there that way. You can get to heaven through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. So John chapter five. Let's go over to John chapter five. John chapter five. Verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So what is, it, what is the Lord telling us? He's saying that he that hears his word and believes on him that sent him. You know, so we have to believe, we have to hear Christ's word. What did Jesus say? We believe on, on the Father. The Father sent the Son. What does the scripture say about the Father? That he is not willing that any perish, but all come to repentance. Right? He wants us to come to faith and repentance in Christ. There's scripture, lots of scripture that points out the fact that the Lord's, uh, like John 3.16, for example, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So God, his intention is for us to believe on the Son. It's scripture, if you go over to Psalm 2, so Psalm 2 says in verse 12, kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So again, you know, telling us, and this is actually one of those Psalms that's, that's pretty fantastic because this deals with when Christ comes, when he is ruling and reigning here on this planet, on this, this is what this is dealing with in this, in this uh, Psalm, in Psalm 2. It's, it's very, uh, there's, there's some really awesome stuff in here. But I want you to understand, it says, Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So you put your trust in Jesus Christ for eternal life. You know, this is a wonderful thing. But if you refuse Christ, be careful, because you're, you're going to be dealing with the, the wrath of God. You know, I mean, and it's not something that you should, um, you should ever play around with. You'll find that that's a, that's a bad place to be. Amen. In Galatians chapter 2, you go to Galatians chapter 2, and let's go down to verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So here, it says here very clearly that man is not justified by the works of the law. So, you know, people try to keep the law and think that that's pleasing to God in keeping the law, the Ten Commandments. That's not what's pleasing to God. What's pleasing to God is, is the recognition and understanding that we're all sinners. Number one, we're all sinners. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We need God because without him, we're in our sin. We need Jesus because he is that sacrifice for our sins. Christ died on the cross for all of us. He died on the cross, but didn't stay dead. He, he rose again from the dead, right? And because he rose again, that's our guarantee that we can have victory over death. Eternal life resides in him. And if we're in him and he's in us, guess what? You have eternal life residing in you if you're in Christ. Outside of Christ, no life. In Christ, you have life. It says here, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. See, and not by the works of the law. So it's by faith in Christ is what justifies you, not keeping the law. 
Even though the law is written in our hearts, our conscience bearing us witness of the law, we understand that we couldn't keep it. If you've broken one commandment, one commandment, you've broken them all. Because you have to be able, if you're going to keep the law, you have to keep it perfectly, which no human being could do. The only one who could do it is Jesus. And he did it. He is that perfect sacrifice. He kept the law perfectly. So our faith is not in our ability to keep the law perfectly. Our faith is in keeping uh, our faith is in keeping the understanding that Jesus kept the law perfectly. He is that perfect sacrifice. He paid the price for me. I believe in Jesus. And now it doesn't give you permission to continue in sin. So don't get that messed up. But a lot of people are putting all the all the trust in their works to get them to heaven and that won't ever do it. It can't. Even if you worked your whole life doing good works, those good works don't get you into heaven. You don't get box office seats in heaven because you did a bunch of good stuff. You know, you get to heaven because of what Christ did. And everything else that we do in life, everything else is our necessary service to God. That's what it is. That's what we do because he saved us. That's what we do because we're, we're children of the king. You know, we're ambassadors for Christ. We love him because he first loved us. Those are our necessary things. But no matter what you do in life, even the, you, you, know, you look and you say, oh, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that and do this. All of those things are still your necessary service. That's the least we can do for what he's done for us. Right? Even if we had even if we had a thousand years of life on this earth in this body, which we don't, but even if we did, it still wouldn't be enough. We couldn't do enough things to repay God for his kindness and his goodness for what he has done for us. So you have to understand that, that we thank God, we have faith in Christ for what he has done, because he's done the work. We put our faith and trust in him for the finished work of Christ on the cross. We still work for him. But we understand that the works that we do are just our necessary service to the Lord. It shows and demonstrates our love for him. That's why we keep the command, his commands that he has given to us. That's why we do it. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Why do we do that? Because we love him. We love him. He gave us a command to love one another. So we do it, right? Because we love him. He gave us a command to go into all the, the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And we do it because we love him. Everything that we do is based on our love for the Savior because of his love for us. See how that's all connected. It's really cool. But understand that you're not justified by the law. There's people today that are getting tripped up in their faith because they, they get wrapped around that. They say, well, if you don't go to church on Saturday, then you're not, you're not serving God right. Really? Because that's not what the Bible says. It sounds like you're trying to keep the law. And you can't be justified by that. You see, it's an easy thing to get into that discussion with people. But you know, here's the thing. Is when you start exalting days and weeks and years and things uh, above your relationship with your brothers and sisters in Christ, you have a problem. You have a problem. Is the Sabbath day the, the day that uh, God took rest? It is. It is. Jesus, though, is our Sabbath rest. We rest in Christ here, and we have the eternal rest that he has promised in heaven later when we go to see him. So we rest in Christ here from the burden of sin, right? The burdens of our sins that were leading us down to death. We rest in Christ. He is our rest. But the heavenly rest... And that's, you know, when it's talking about the scripture, that it, that heavenly rest is what we, we look for. And if you're there, like our one brother that went to see Jesus this week, he went to, to be with the Lord. He is in that heavenly rest. He is in that his rest with, with Christ. You know, but we're still here, so we're still working for the Lord. Amen. But it, you can't partially, like, I'm going to keep this law, but I'm not going to keep that one. Or I'm going to keep this one and not that one. You know, either you keep the law perfectly or you offend on all points. Jesus kept it perfectly. 
So he is that one sacrifice forever for our sins. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, uh, let's go over to Galatians 3, verse 11 through 14. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. It says here, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You know, the blessing of Abraham, that promise that was given to him before the circumcision was given to him, it was given before the law was ever given to Moses, right? This happened way before that, right? The promise. And so that's what Gentiles are grafted in. And that's why Acts, uh, when, when they had the discussion about what, what things the Gentiles were supposed to be doing, you know, because there were, in the book of Acts, the early church had, a, had their first great big meeting. They got everybody together because there had been uh, some Jews that had gone to the Gentiles and told them, oh, you have to keep the law, you have to be circumcised. And they're like, the church got together and they had their, their first meeting. And guess what wasn't mentioned in there? No, you don't have to be circumcised. You know, you, you, what, what do you have to do? Don't eat things strangled. Don't, you know, you know keep away from fornication. And, uh, but there was no mention, was no mention of you must keep the Sabbath. See, the Sabbath was given to Israel as that, that, that uh, symbol, that, that sign. And, and it wasn't given to the church church wasn't given the sabbath we were given a day and we celebrate the resurrection the day that christ rose from the dead because it was the first day of the week that's why we celebrate sunday as a, as a day of worship to the lord we are celebrating the resurrection every time we get together every time we come together that's what it, that's what we're celebrating the resurrection the promise of rest now in christ the promise of future rest forever with him that's, that's what we do so that's what the difference is case you wanted to know and some people do want to know like, i want to know why do we do that well that's why we do it uh, we have peace with god and peace romans chapter 5 let's go to romans 5 romans 5 verse 10 says this for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. See, it is by the life of Christ that we are saved. Because he lives, we live. If he hadn't arose from the dead, we'd be in our sins still. But because he lives, we live. We're in Christ and he is in us. We have that relationship with Christ. And it's, it's an amazing thing here that God did that when we were still enemies with him now something that's even more mind-blowing than that honestly i gotta i gotta gotta admit this is just this got me is um and we're gonna get down to that verse six a little later in romans chapter five verse six but it's just amazing to me the fact that before god made anything before he came up with any of his creation he already had a plan to save us I mean, it's not like God made creation and was hoping we wouldn't mess up. He knew we were going to mess up. He knew that everything that's ever happened in human history was going to happen. He knew it. And yet he still made us to give us an opportunity by our own free will to come to Christ, to put our faith and trust in him, to, to know that God is good. You know, even before before the law way back you know the time from adam to abraham in that time look what god did there was still people seeking god there was still people living for the lord searching for him you know enoch walked with him you see had that line of seth they were they were looking to the lord thank god that we had people like noah or else we wouldn't be here today but the Lord knew. I mean, before he made anything, he knew. 
all of the things that transpire in your life and in my life, everything that's ever happened in your life, God knew before anything ever happened, he knew what would happen. All the times that you rebelled against God, that you turned from him, that you disobeyed him, he knew that. And he still allowed you to be born, still allowed you to be here, still worked with you and, and te he taught you kindly, took care of you. He didn't turn away from you and, and wash his hands of you the first time that you messed up. He keeps dealing with you and helping you. I mean, and to think that he already knew all of this before he ever made anything. I mean, think how great of a God that is. That God loved us enough to, to send his son. Like from eternity past when he, he knew that he was going to, I mean, he knew he was going to make this. He knew that the cost that it would cost to redeem man. And yet he's still willing to pay that for us. For us who are dirt that has been brought to life by the breath of God. The fact that God would make man in his own image after his own likeness. The fact that God would want to have a relationship with us that even takes the time to be able to talk with us, to gently take care of us and love us. He is a great God. We're dirt. Why? Why would he love us so much? We were his enemies and yet he paid the price for us. Jesus allowed himself to be so abused by fallen, sinful, wicked men, and we were the ones doing it. Maybe the Romans were the ones that were beating him. Maybe the Romans nailed him to that cross, but we put him there too. Our sin. Our sin. And his great love. Think of that. It is an amazing thing to serve God. Because God loves us so much we can't hardly wrap our heads around how incredible that is yeah let me ask you ladies a question because you ladies some of you ladies are pretty proficient bakers you bake pretty well right you can make you can make some cakes and stuff and let's talk about a cake for a minute you're about to make a cake and that cake is it's going to be a cake that you you really want to have you're looking forward to making it. And before you make it, you realize that this cake's going to be messed up. It's not going to turn out the way you wanted it to turn out to begin with. It's, it's going to just not set right. It's not going to raise right. It's not going to look right. It's probably going to smell pretty bad. And uh, it's going to come out, you know, kind of tinged and burnt and, and whatnot. Now, uh, us, in our human wisdom, we would say, I'm not going to make that cake. I'm just, you know, I'm going to go back to the drawing board, figure out how to make a better cake, because that one, I'm not making it. That's a, it's a waste of money and time and effort, and why would I do that? And besides, I'll be disappointed. And I don't want to be disappointed. I want my cake to be delicious. Am I kind of close to it? Is that right? But think about God. He knew we would be messed up. He knew that we would do it. He made us He made us good, and we messed it up. This creation, he made very good, and we messed it up. And yet he still took the time and the effort and the patience to create us, to work with us, to gently lead each one of us back to a relationship with him. We can be born again. That we can have new life. That he can make this messed up, dirt something that he can deal with pleasing in his sight not because of what we did but because of what he did he did it all and we just believe him we just have to put our faith and trust in him and he takes care of the rest that's a pretty good deal amen, amen. and if we if we believe him we obey him 
It's part of the believing thing. It's part of faith. Faith obeys God. Faith doesn't rebel. Faith doesn't say, I don't want any part of that. I want to do things my own way. That's self. We're supposed to crucify self. We're not supposed to let self dominate our lives as Christians. We are to, to, to obey God. So I'm just saying God's a good God. And he's pretty awesome. And I love him a lot. Psalm 85. You know, I was, had a talk with somebody today. It's your turn into Psalm 85. And talked about the basics, you know, the basics of, of our faith in Christ. And, you know... I think too many people don't spend enough time there. Because if I'm right, I think a lot of Christians need to spend a whole lot more time there at the basics. The basics of just trusting God. Put your faith and trust in Him. Because as Christians, we all have a hard time with that. Paul said, I was going you know, to feed you with meat, but you, you know, he couldn't. He had a give them the, the milk of the word because they weren't ready for meat. And how many of us as Christians, we're, we don't even have the basics mastered yet. And we're, we're ready. Oh God, I want to know the deeper things. I mean, you know, I want to do, I want to go higher. I want to go deeper. I don't know whether you're going higher or deep. I don't know where you're going. You could be go deep or high. I don't know. You're going somewhere. But how about just stick to the basics? Get back into the word of God. Start believing him and trusting him and obeying him. Just do that. Love one another. Love him first above all. I mean, the basics. Because until we get that right, Randy over here, he's a hunter. He goes out and hunts. And let me tell you, there's a thing in, in hunting, it's a basic. It's called a sight picture. You gotta get, if you're going out there with a rifle, you have to understand how to use your sights on the rifle you have to understand how to breathe when you're when you're getting ready to to shoot that thing and that, there's a few other things like what's behind what you're shooting at right that's kind of important who's around you that's kind of important you know uh is there a, is there ammunition in your gun well that might be important too unless you just want to say pow pow you know you could do that and you never get anything but it would be funny but you know uh the thing is, is there's basics to it. There's basics to shooting, right? There's basics to basketball or football or playing sports. There's basics to driving a car. There's basics to, to many things in life that people, sometimes they don't grasp the basics. I can tell you in this town and pretty much everywhere that we've gone, we see people don't grasp the basics of driving. They, they don't understand the, the purpose of a speed limit sign or or why you use turn signals in a car and they're not for decoration during you know holidays i mean they're actually something that you use when you want other people to know where you're going you know how about lights at nighttime that's a good thing we've seen all kinds of things like that you know what side of the road should i be driving on when i want to go 30 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour you know uh you know speed limit area i mean where should i be driving there's a whole lot of things. Basics are important. And I can tell you right now that you never get past that in the word. You, you know, people say, oh, I'm going to keep on going. You, you can, praise the Lord. But you better have a firm grasp of the basics. Apostle Paul kind of did, I think. Amen? You don't see a lot of teachers like the Apostle Paul these days. I'm sure there's some out there. God is dealing with each one of us, but the church today is kind of malnourished because preachers don't preach this word anymore. They don't stand on the Bible anymore. They go and preach what's relevant, culturally acceptable, not offensive, all inclusive. Well, I'm going to tell you, God is all inclusive. He is. Everyone has a choice. You, you choose Christ, you get to go to heaven. You deny Christ, you get to go to hell. Nobody's excluded from that choice. It's not based on your own merits. It's based on the merits of Christ. It's what he did, not what you do. 
not your effort. You can put faith and trust in him. That's what your requirement is. Put faith and trust in what God said. Believe that he, what he says is, is true. What he has done is real. Because he has. And it is. Psalm 85, verses 8 through 10. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh to them that fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and he shall set us in the way of his steps. Did you see that? He says here, he says, I will hear what God the Lord will speak. You know, how many people today are doing that? Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. I want to hear what he has to say. And, you know, in... Before you stop, your, <laughs> there's people online, so before they stop online, pause it, and run around listening for an audible voice, let me tell you that you go to the Word of God, the Bible. God speaks from His Word. He still speaks from His Word. He will speak to your heart. People are waiting, wanting an audible voice. You know, I'm going to tell you, you don't want that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you, Israel found out they didn't want that. Sometimes what you ask for, you don't, you don't really want. So, you know, the Lord spoke twice in the ministry of God from heaven. The Father spoke twice in the ministry of Christ on the earth. Did you know that? At the baptism, he spoke. You know, and also at the Mount Transfiguration, he spoke. And both times testified to Christ. Both of those, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. Right? What did he tell us to do? Hear Jesus. What did Jesus speak? What the Father gave him to say. What is going to judge us? What Jesus said. What did Jesus say? What the Father gave him to say. What did God say? Listen to what Jesus is saying. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's pretty much, you, you better get back to the word of God. Amen? It's pretty simple, pretty basic, but people are missing that. They want to go get a word from the Lord from somebody. Listen, I, I don't thank you, but I want, to, I, know, I want to know what God says in his word, what the Bible says. You know what's good, good about this? God never gets it wrong. He's always right. His word is always true. You cannot say that for other things. A book, you might have a book that's well-meaning, a well-meaning book that maybe a Christian author put it together. But if, um, if that man is writing this book out there, it's not the inspired holy word of God. It's his experiences based on what he has been through and, and his idea. And it may be a good book, but it may not be complete. It may not be completely right. There may be problems. This, no problems. Always right. The news. You turn on the news. The news, I mean, sometimes, rarely, they might tell you something that's good news, but that's extremely rare. And if it is, it usually deals with like a cute little animal or something like that, you know. But when it deals with people, it's always bad for some reason. Most of the time. But the news, can you trust it? No. No. Can you turn on YouTube and listen to all of these, um, you know, YouTube channels and trust it? No. But you can trust God. You can trust his word. That's what I'm telling you guys to trust tonight. Trust his word. I mean, I don't even, I mean, don't take my word for it. Look for yourself. Search the scriptures to see if what I'm saying is so. Search them out. Study the word. We have a responsibility to get to the basics. And this is where God, you know, really dealt with my heart before about, you know, I needed to get into the word to find out what he said. Do you have that desire to know what God said, to, to know him better? Then get into the Bible. 
If you get in the Bible, you're going to find out more about God. You're going to find out neat things that and sometimes you're going to get to get to things that he's shown us in the scripture. And you're like, I wonder what was going on there. Sometimes we don't know because the scripture doesn't tell us. It gives you insight into things, but not so much into everything. Some things are, it says the secret things belong to the Lord, you know, so what he tells us, what he's revealed to us, that's what he wants us to know. You know, that's, there's so many people that get into the, uh, what do you think about the Nephilim? Well, what does the scripture say about them? Because that's as far as I'm going to go with that. You know, there's people that also try to, try to take Genesis 1 and they go from verse between one and two, they try to come up with a whole backstory of another civilization before this. It, sorry, this is the one. You're living in it. This is the one that he made. Now, he flooded it once, but he told us that. You see, people, this is why I say they get ridiculous because they go into all of these things that's not, not in the scripture. They try to come up with backstories to everything. I have a problem with that. Because if it's, if you had to come up with a backstory, then it's not a real story. You know, I want to know the truth. And so I know the truth by sticking to what the Word of God says. What does the Word say? And before somebody sends me a, a, a text or something, well, what about in Jeremiah where it talks about the, the, the flood? It was the flood. It wasn't the pre-before Adam flood. It was the flood, the Noah's flood. That's the flood they're talking about. Whenever he talks about the flood, that's what he's talking about. Unless he's talking about a flood of ungodly, and there's that, you know. But, uh, you know, anyway, just trying to be specific, sorry, but we have to stick to what the Bible says, not to what it doesn't say, not to what we think it says. We don't apply meaning, uh, you know, we don't apply meaning to something that, you know, we've taken and, and do, did our own twist to. We, we, we stick to what does he say in context. Is it consistent with the rest of the word of God? Then we know. But if you don't study the word like that, if you just say, well, you know, uh, I'm going to apply my own meaning to this. Well, then you're going to get it wrong. The Bible interprets itself. It, it speaks for itself. It defines itself. If you want to know what love is, look at Christ. Greater love has no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. What does God require? What is the greatest commandment? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. To love your neighbor as yourself. He tells us this. Jesus told us that. Where did he get it from? The Father. The Father said, Listen to the Son. Hear ye him. So, praise the Lord. Let's go back to Romans 5. Is it food for thought tonight? Praise the Lord. By whom, verse 2, Romans 5, verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. How do we have access? How do we have access to the grace in where we, wherein we stand? It's by faith. Faith is that key. You know, by grace you're saved through what? Faith. The faith is not in your faith, okay? Faith is not in your faith. Even though Word of Faith teachers will tell you that. They say, well, you got to have faith in your faith. No, I have to fa have faith in Jesus. And my faith is in God and what He has done. I trust Him. I trust Him. He will never fail us. He'll never fail you. Did you know that you'll fail you? If you've never experienced that, well, praise the Lord. But I know that each one of us could probably raise our hand and say, yes, I have failed me many times. But God has never failed me, not once. Not once. In my entire life, of all the days of, that I've had on this earth, God has never failed me once. He's always been there. He's always faithful. He's always loving. He's always been kind. He has always been trying to get my attention when I get off track and, and out doing my own thing. And God said, no, he's like, like that, loving, that loving Heavenly Father. He chastises those in whom he loves right? to bring us back to repentance and a relationship with him. He has never failed me. 
I have failed him, but he has never failed me. Amen. So we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory of God. You know, we have this hope, right? We have this hope. We know that Jesus is coming. We know that we know that we know that Jesus is coming. That day is approaching faster and faster. We don't know the day or the, the hour. We don't know the time. But we see the times that we live in. We see when we look out and we see the things that are happening in the world. And we look, first of all, to Scripture. We know Scripture tells us what's going to be happening in the last days. We know that Christ was manifested in the last days for us. Did you know that? To die on that cross for us. That, that scripture said that's the last days. So we're in the last days. And, you know, in case you were wondering, like, oh, are we in the last days? I really don't know. Well, the Bible tells us we are. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. First Peter chapter 1. Let's read verse um, 18, starting at verse 18 down to 20. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition of your fa from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Where's our faith and hope? It's in God. Why? Because he, ra he rose Christ from the dead. And Jesus was manifested when? He gave him glory. It says right here, he was manifest in these last times for you. <laughs> so, you know, are we in the last days? If these are the last times, we are. The scripture tells us. Um, Hebrews chapter 9 Hebrews chapter 9, and we're going to look at verse, start at verse 24. Hebrews 9, 24 says this, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer, offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he have often suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once, in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. As it, has been, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment... So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Let me just tell you here that, it, what does it say here in verse 26? It says here, uh, for then he must have often suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. It says, it said earlier in the scripture we looked at in Peter, the last times here it says, in the end of the world. Do you think we're near the end? Yes, we are. The scripture tells us we are. It tells us that we are very close. What, what holds that time? God's mercy. His, his mercy. His long-suffering. Everything in the Father's timing, it's, gonna, it's in His hands when, when He sends Christ. It's in His hands. But it's His mercy waiting for people to come to Christ, waiting for people to take him, you know, where he says, come now, let us reason together, though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. The Lord showing long suffering. He is long suffering. But there is an end. There is a time where he will make that call. There is a day and an hour that Christ will return. The Father knows that day and hour. None of the rest of us do, but we know that Scripture testifies 
It's soon. Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. It's soon. That day is approaching. So how should we live in this world? Knowing that Christ is soon to come. How should we be? Should we be walking in disobedience to the Lord? Should we be idly spending our time doing everything other than reaching people with the good news of the gospel? Should we be doing, you know, spending all of our time just doing nothing? Or should we be out there obeying his word, knowing that the time is short? When you're in the field, and I got Randy over here, he's farming too right now, and he's, he's out there doing hay, you know, cutting hay and doing all that stuff and pick, bailing it up and pray for his baler. But, you know, Randy, uh, there's only so many hours in a day that you can work out there. Is that right? It gets to a time when it's too dark and you can't. Right now we have light. We have time. Not much. We know that Jesus is coming soon and soon enough our work on this earth will be done. God will call us home. Our opportunity to do great things for Christ is now. Let's live for him. Let's love him. Let's obey him. Let's do all things for his glory and his honor. Not for ours. Who cares about our glory? We don't, we don't need glory. We're dirt. But he needs glory. He's God. He made us. We didn't make ourselves. We need to glorify him. Lift up the name of Jesus and let all the world know that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is there for them. They can turn from their sins and trust him, but he is coming soon. He is the soon coming king. And soon and very soon, they'll see him. They'll see him. Every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That day is coming. It's a day of celebration and joy for the church. It's a day of salvation for Israel. It's a day of mourning and terror for those that don't know Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for your word tonight. We just ask that you would teach us, continue to teach us from your word. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this, this free gift of salvation that's available in Christ. Lord, help us to be busy about the work that you have called us to and reach as many as we can while we can. Lord, let, let us always be understanding that we have limited days. We have limited hours. We are in the last times and the last of the last days. Lord, help us to be faithful to what you have called us to do. Loving you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Loving, loving our neighbor as ourselves preaching the gospel to every creature. We thank you, we praise you, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.